Welcome everybody to a brand new episode of what's now known as Pedro's Adventures, aka Midlands Explorer. We're starting today in the village of Weekly, just because we do a lot of circular routes and this bike trail today begins here in an old cemetery, an old churchyard. And we're going to go to places today covered in history. We're going to Great Oakley, we're going to Stanyon, and then hopefully we're going to go via Grafton Underwood on the way back just to go and check out an old officer's club. I'm not 100% yet guys, a lot depends on my medicines because I've had asthma in the last few weeks and a lot depends if I can do it or not with the asthma I've had. That's why I've not been around guys and a proper intro very soon. I've got a bike now with a lock as well which is a big handy thing. So I just wanted to tell you that everyone, um, that I might lock the bike up somewhere in Grafton and then walk around. Proper intro on the way, welcome to a new episode here on YouTube. Right guys, welcome to another episode here with what I'm normally known as Midlands Explorer, but now more commonly known as, on YouTube anyway, as Pedro's Adventures. We're going to start here today guys in Weekly, a village that I came to on one of my first journeys with the family and kids and on that behalf I want to say first of all hello to them lot, to my girlfriend Sam um, and by the way I got a blue tongue, that's another story, we'll go into that in a second. Right, I just want to say hello to Sam, love your loads, big hello to Corbin, Kaylee, JJ, um, Sam's mum, which is Sue, happy birthday to you recently, as well as Sam, um, Pete, Ricky, and his brother, which I forgot the name right now, but, uh, is it Chris, I think, anyway, I want to say hello to everyone of this family, love you all to bits, and, uh, we're starting here today in Weekly Village, simply because we're going to go through a few more churches again, guys, today, and, Starting at this church, which is well, well preserved, and as you know, they're all closed at the moment. But we're here at Weekly, and we're here with some quite old greats, as there is in many of these churchyards. But I've got my mask today in case I go anywhere, because anywhere you go, you're supposed to wear masks. However, I'm not a big fan of them with my asthma. I have got my COVID test result, and it's negative, so that's really good news for me because last week I had a bout of asthma and that's why I've not done a video for a few weeks. Now, I'm negative for COVID, but that doesn't mean you can't get it anywhere. Now, I would, have, I would recommend people anyway to go to local testing sites to get your COVID test done. A swab near your tonsils and a swab up your nostril. It's not the end of the world. It just makes you feel more safe to know you haven't got it. At least you haven't got it for now. Um, this autumn is going to be an issue and Europe's cases are rising. So we've got to be careful, guys. Stay safe. Um, I want to start, introduce myself to anyone who doesn't know. My name is Pedro Antonio Perez. Originally from Spain. My mum was also from Switzerland. Rest in peace. She passed away a while back when I was younger. I'm from Nottingham. So born in Nottingham. And I live now in Northamptonshire. And that is why I'm focusing my videos on this area. Um, Northamptonshire, by the way guys, if you don't know, is one of the biggest counties in the UK, which gives me a big scope of places to go to because there's a lot of villages, towns, etc. with a lot of history dating all the back to medieval, Roman, Anglo-Saxon and all sorts. So um, today we're off to a village which is called Great Oakley, which is in the Corby civil parish and we're going to go straight there today without doing any videos on the way like i normally do uh, to distract myself mainly um and to stay on a what i say um a ride because i go by bike so if i'm on a steady speed all the way through that helps a lot for me as i say i had asthma now stopping and starting everywhere and um 
for me as an asthmatic, it's good to keep on one route. I don't know if you can see there, we've got some Celtic crosses in the background here. Uh, quite a few of them all lined up together. We've also got quite a few new tombstones in here. But I'm not going into that right now. I'm just letting you know. Behind us here is also the beginning of the Bowton Estate. So guys, we're going to head off towards Geddington, which we've already been to in a previous video. But we're not staying there. We're going straight through left onto... Um, a place called Newton, we're going to go past there, it's a very small little place, and then go to Great Oakley. From there we plan to go to Stanyon, which is another place with a bit of history, and from Stanyon we may go back to Grafton Underwood. A lot depends on this weather and my asthma. Should I not go today guys, I will be back at Grafton Underwood soon, because I want to visit a few places there. Big hello to Knots Explorer, who edits my videos. Now, if you want to get hold of him, apart from on YouTube, he's also on Instagram. And I would recommend you watch his videos anyway, because of the abandoned places he does. He goes to abandoned places, he's got a great crew of people with him always. Great photographers, great people. And not only that, he's a great editor. That's the important thing. I couldn't do these videos without an editor. And he is a champion in the editing. And his prices are really good, very economical, and I would recommend you get in touch with him if you're one of these people like me who loves doing videos but can't do the editing. I can, but it would take a long time. He's got the patience, so check him up. Now I want to say hello to all my Instagram fans anyway, and everyone who's been following me lately been telling me that I should do more videos of villagers. That's what I'm doing today. So guys, without further ado, Follow me, we're off to Great Oakley on Pedro's Adventures. Hi guys, we have arrived in Great Oakley. I uh, just want to show you a little overview of it. Um, a beautiful little village, like many around this area. Got lots of different trucks and uh, farmland transport in general moving around here. But here we are, and we're off to St. Michael's and All Angels Church, uh, which is situated there in the middle of this big park. Um, I want to say welcome, everybody. I don't know if you can see on these trees, we already have conkers. They're quite big already. Obviously, they're not falling yet. As soon as they come, the kids, I don't know if you remember, when you were younger, people pick up conkers really quickly. Hello. Um, we're here at Great Oakley, like I say on yet another adventure here um, remember we're going to see St Michael's and All Angels uh, Church and then we're going to give you a bit more history about the place including how a lot of buildings around here were uh, graded what is a graded building for example what does it mean exactly grade 1 or grade 2 or grade 3 what does it mean does anyone know I'll tell you in a little while and we'll tell you a little bit more about the area in general. Got lovely farms down here with cows in the background. I don't know if you can see that or not. I'm going to hopefully stop by somewhere and have a cup of tea. Um, but yeah, as I say, this is also on um, a tributary, which is like an affluent, to the River Nen. There's a brook down here called Harper's Brook. We will also see that, guys. So, I'm going to get away from the busy road, stick to this amazing park here go through and tell you a little bit more when we get there. Follow me. So, just like this little sign here, it says private OK estate, dogs must be on these them. But then at the bottom it says, no conquering allowed. Huh, I like that. That's obviously because kids maybe go wild a bit. No dog fouling, that's fine. And then we've got this entry here. You guys will probably know what this is, that's so no cattle come across here. Funny enough, I've had my foot stuck in one of them in the past, but when I was in Spain, quite a while ago now, and uh, we'll open this, we'll go through here. Got quite a bit of info to tell you. This little place, Great Oakley. Reminds me a little bit of when I was down in Cranford St Andrews actually reminds me a little bit of that 
go across and see some animals. We've always got animals on my journey, did you know? They're over there on the other side of this Harper's Brook, which I'm going to tell you a little bit more about. All this was obviously a manor, guys. And I say that because a lot of these places in the past were a manor and then they had like a church in the middle of it or an abbey in some places. And uh, talk a little bit more about the brook itself to you. A brook that I've already been past when I was in Thrapston. And this actually covers quite a bit of extensive part of land. I'm uh, going to a little bit more about that in a minute. I'm just gonna try and sit down somewhere and I'll talk to you a little bit more about where we're going today. We're gonna focus on this place of Great Oakley. Then we're gonna to go to Stunyon, tell you a little bit more about there. We've, they've got some peculiar curiosities in a church there. As you know, as usual, we've got tree cutters in the background because for some reason, every time I come, they wanna cut everything down. So that's fine. Uh, but uh, yeah, we're gonna have a walk through here. We're gonna head off towards this amazing church and then I'm going to tell you a little bit more about the history of this area in general. Follow me. Right guys, we're getting closer to the church now with the manor itself, the old hall behind it. Um, I just want to tell you that uh, Great Oakley in general lies on the upper reaches of the Harpers Brook. Now the Harpers Brook, as I say, was a tributary to the River Nen. Now, as you can see, this land is quite extended and this church was right next to this hall, which we're going to go a bit further now, nearer to it. The river, well, not the river, the brook, as it's called, originates all the way near um, Market Harbour in Leicestershire. And it goes along here at the back of there and it goes all the way down um, towards Thrapston, where we were recently. And uh, it mendeers or meanders, sorry, my bad. It meanders all the way through both counties. And um, I'm here today, obviously, to see this church, which is quite impressive as we're going closer to it now. Fortunately, we do have someone cutting trees in the background. We can't do much about that. But uh, I just wanted to say, um, the whole brook here and this whole land area here was actually a narrow strip of limestone, sandstone and clay. And the geology presumably produced or provided a narrow strip of open pasture, which is all this part here, and um, also Oak Lee, which is why this area is called Oak Lee Valley. And also um, with the woodland on either side of the brook um, was either side of like clay, if you understand your geology. And uh, we're going to get a bit closer to this Church of St. Michael and All Angels. Now, why is it called St. Michael and All Angels? Well, if you know, the same date as my birthday, which is the 29th of September, is St. Michael and All the Archangels. Um, so, it might be due to do with that. It might be to do with that. As usual, I am losing my wording. Just got the bike there for now. Um... But yeah, it might be to do with that, because the angels were connected with St. Michael, who was one of the main angels. Now, I'm going to head towards this church of St. Michael's and hope the tree cutters don't annoy me too much. But if they do, they do. Follow me. So where we have it, nice little church. Maybe not as old as other churches I've seen, and it has been constructed in different eras, which I'll tell you a little bit more about that in a moment. Um, I'm going to tell you a little bit more about this church anyway, and surrounding area. I'm just going to go through here, the main little entrance here. It's quite pretty. And as I say, I'm going to tell you a little bit more as we go along. As I say, it's called St. Michael and All Saints. Sorry, all angels. And it was originally built between 1200 and 1250. Let's get a bit closer to it. I think I've burnt my neck. Got a bit of a... Uh, it's not that hot, actually, compared to other days, but I think I've burnt myself. <laughs> uh, quite easily done in direct sunlight. Uh, let's see where we can put the bike. See, that window is a bit newer. Uh, 
obviously restored after a while. It's pretty here. And um, until actually 1405, it is unknown what actually happened at St. Michael's, as there's no details of any services or nothing here. Um, nice little arch there. And um, it's quite interesting because this church had no font or churchyard. Obviously now it's got graves, etc. But originally it didn't have that. That was added later. In fact, it was in 1405, late 1405, that the Pope was petitioned for a cemetery, font and a priest that came from Pipewell, which is a village just down the road. And... As you can see now, it's a proper little church with its graveyard, etc. Even monks came here from Pipewell. So there was always clergy here and people that came here. But for many years, one didn't know why it was not like detailed for any services. Um, the church was built as part of the original manor estate, with the church being the central hub. So when I say the manor estate, I'm obviously um, regarding, I'm obviously indicating it's to do with the manor itself, which is what we're going to show you now, because the manor itself is something else. Here we have it in the background. And obviously this church was built as part of the manor. You could call it a hall, but many continue to just call it a manor. Now it's quite cool that we can come along here so I can show you this. Um, but like I say, this place, and it still is, is very popular for uh, weddings and baptisms, obviously, in the church. So after you have a baptism in here, most guests go in there. We're going to show you a little bit more about the building if we can get nearer to it, which I think we can. Um, on this church itself, yeah, there was also construction in the 15th and 17th century. That's why we see some bits that are a bit more, uh, well, newer. They're not newer for us lot, because it's a long time ago. But you can check parts of the building, like I say, where they've got like an extended window, or even look, like this window here was obviously put in much later, although it's still got an old arc. Um, it also, this is also the home to a grade two listed chest tomb. Now guys, I don't know if you know what a chest tomb is, but we're gonna go and look for it, if we can find it or not, because I'm not sure if it's inside or outside, but it is well known for that. So we're gonna have a look and see if we can find that. There we go again, how you can see it's got newer parts than older parts. Um, we're gonna give you a little bit more actually. I mean, one question I have is what is a chest tomb? Um, but I also had a question for you a little earlier and that was, what is a listed building? What does a listed building mean to you? We'll tell you very soon. And I'll try and get the manor in the background so I can explain a little bit more. But here we have it. Little church here. Very cool. We're not allowed to get in there, guys, which has annoyed me. So I'm going to try and hop over that way and see a bit of the man around the other side, which is a shame. I mean, what what real, what real difference does it really make if I do go in there or not? I wonder if it's uh, possibly originally owned, obviously it was originally owned by someone important, but who has it now? There must be another family that has it now. A private family got that whole house. That's a bit crazy, isn't it? But that's the way it is around here. But let me try and go around the other side and see if we can see a bit more. Follow me. So guys, I've just been told it is privately owned now. I'm going to go a little zoom in on that building. It's something very pretty, I've got to say. And it's a shame it is what it is, but it is what it is, end of the day. And, um, well, it's a grade two listed building. Now, those of you don't know exactly what this means with these graded buildings, right? It's basically been approved. So, the they've been awarded, yeah... Um, their status because they have architectural features or are of historic interest. So like Bowton House, Woolerton Hall in Nottinghamshire, um, and other halls you might have been to around the country. 
even churches have got these grade listed uh, as well um, but they're divided into three like categories okay three grades firstly so grade listed one buildings being the most important and then we've got grade listed two more than special interest and grade listed three which is preserved structure so that you often get on places that are half abandoned or ruins like Newstead Abbey for example I'm not sure if that's three or two but you do get I think Newstead Abbey is a higher one probably a one or a two but still there's some buildings that are completely in ruins and they're still graded free and um, these grades mean a building cannot be altered or demolished without approval from a range of official bodies so that's all it means really and it's a shame we can't get into this one because this building as you know is well the church is part of that building because it was part of the manor now i can't get into it and there's nothing i can do about it because just going through the cemetery itself the churchyard it is like blocked off on one side so i couldn't go all the way around like i wanted to but i have managed to see the hall here so i'm quite happy i can see it from this side anyway but it is private property so unfortunately we can't go down there like i hoped um, we do have part of the brook itself down here with part of uh, a little lake that there is behind there. So we are going to go down there. I've got someone looking at me as usual. I mean, I'm not doing anything wrong here. I'm just filming a bit of the area. Um, just like Cranford St. Andrew though, it's very pretty, very picturesque and there's a lot of landscape everywhere. And it's a great time to come when it's weather like this. It's not as hot as it was last week, I'll give you that. But it's still pretty hot. And along here, as I say, we have a little lake uh, that's part of the Harper's Brook. Uh, I'm going to take a photo there. I think that would be a nice photo there. And uh, I've just seen some cows over there. It says there this is a public footpath okay what this bridge is okay uh shall we go along there see some cows up front up front no up near i meant but it says there's a public path yeah but then it says over there that it's private so i'm wondering if the public path goes that way but here we have them lovely cows in the background anyway i bet you uh, dairy products around here are something special really nice i like local produce that's really really fresh and about you but i love that especially when it comes to milk and stuff like that you can get some milk that tastes weird but anyway yeah um as i say today guys this video isn't as long as other videos have been and um today we're gonna now head off to stanion and tell you a little bit more about the history down there Please do not feed the donkeys, no matter what they say. <laughs> uh, here we are, the Great Oakley Estate. Might take a picture of that, actually. I might head towards Grafton Underwood because I was looking for the... Um, is that locked? Yeah. Heading towards the old commissioner's office because there is more buildings there, I've been told, that I haven't seen. And being with my bike might be a good idea to just lock up my bike nearby and go into them. Whereas if I didn't have a lock for the bike, I wouldn't be too keen on doing it. We're standing on some sort of structure here. Which I'm not sure what it was, but it's definitely concrete. So there must have been something right here. It's beautiful, isn't it? This is beautiful. I love this kind of nature. Right, guys, I'm off to Stanion. I'll catch up with you there, guys. For all you bridge enthusiasts. Look at this, this is a viaduct and it's where EMR, so East Midlands trains, they cross this bridge and well, it's obviously derelict uh, on some parts of it because it's cordoned off but it's not derelict in the sense that you can't use it anymore, it's obviously used but it's out of bounds let's say. But it is an impressive part of architecture and well worth stopping here just to look at this bridge. 
and well it's more known obviously as a um, viaduct it's quite high and it's got a bit of um, graffiti around it and down there is actually one of the main roads where I need to cross to go down towards Stanyan but I thought I'd give you a little bit of a detour and show you this bridge viaduct here on top of the uh, Harper's Brook uh, you see here a bit of graffiti and more on this side and uh, yeah it's pretty tall guys I thought I'd come and show you this because it's pretty tall quite interesting and worth the stop to see um, nearly just fell over there but uh, found a few little bits and bobs here I'm not sure what they belong to anyone know let me know I'm not sure what that is here any clues not 100% sure um, but here comes the Harper's Brook again and uh, surely you don't get a massive tall viaduct just for a little brook like that it's obviously because it goes across quite high for the trains um, but as I say you can't get onto the other side because I ain't crossing that to get over there but it is out of bounds, out of bounds, not derelict. Forgive me for saying that, guys. And uh, yeah, it's uh, quite nice, really. I thought I'd stop here, just to have a little stop. It's it got an echo here, it's echoing. Not too sure what that is there, actually. There's red, yellow, and white. Is that maybe, I don't know what it is. Anyone know? Can you see that down there? If anyone knows, let us know. And these were obviously part of the construction for the actual viaduct in the first place. It says grip bar. Right, so that was a grip bar. If you know what that is. Um, but yeah, I uh, didn't want to not come and see this. I saw it and I thought, I've got to come and visit it and at least show you around. This is Bridge Harper's Brook. So yeah, it's quite impressive, guys. I couldn't not come here, I needed to show you it. And uh, yeah, we're heading off to Stanyan. And as we get to Stanyan, tell you a little bit more about that. Uh, so here are these grip bars, there's quite a few of them actually. There's another one here. And there's one up there, and another one further up. It's quite impressive really. And as I say, over there it's out of bounds. We can't go down there for some reason. Uh, I believe there's no river there or nothing. I'm not sure why that is the case. But yeah, here we are guys. Just thought I'd show you this. Here we are everyone. We've just arrived in Stanyan. Now, Stanyan, well known for quite a few different things. Mainly because of a village film in wartime Britain. 1944, there was a film made here called springtime in an english village it's a 1944 film and um it's about a um african girl actually it's made by colonial films and it's about an african young girl who was crowned the may queen <laughs> Thank you. 
we're heading off towards St. Peter's Church here in the village, a very beautiful church which has a very strange curiosity and we're going to talk to you a little bit more about that as we get there. Very picturesque this little village here of Stanyan with its cottages and as you can see up here it's rather high steeple on top of this church and uh, as I say guys this is called Stanyan we've just arrived here and we'll tell you a little bit more as we get closer to the church follow me look at that church guys um, I don't know if you know uh, Stanyan was also well known for its cluster of pits and in 2002 they found here 600 kilograms of pottery uh, look at these little cottages I love them really cool little cottage I'd love to live in one of them I really would picturesque little things like that really cool with the old style um, roofs here we are more modernized St Peter's Hall and here we have the church itself quite beautiful really I quite like these churches here in Stanyan there's two parts to Stanyan guys there's a Euro hub which is a little Stanyan and it's twinned with a city in France and a, twi a city in Germany and this is the main little village of Stanyan I want to talk to you a little bit more about this St Peter's Church and its curiosity that lays beneath here this area was also well known for waste dumps and as I say a cluster of pits in the area but we're going to go in and talk to you a little bit more about this church follow me as I say this church is called St Peter's guys got some quite unique little features here but it's got a big curiosity a big strange thing here I don't know if I'm supposed to be filming that but wow some nice gardens around here um, as I say this church has got something that many churches doesn't have around here in fact doesn't have anywhere I don't think and that is the following this church okay St Peter as I called it uh, as it's called um, is well known okay for apart from being part of that film that I was on about to you before it's also well known for uh, well I don't know how to put it to you guys so I'm gonna explain a little bit more and let me think let me see what you think about it you tell me comment below well guys like I was saying this church why is it unique well apparently it's got a antiquity now it's a strange antiquity it's called a whale bone okay but apparently it belongs to some cow not any cow but a folkloric cow so an english folklore cow folklore as in a bit like when you say about robin hood being a folklore that it, we don't know if he's real or not yeah well this church if you look closely by which unfortunately we can't go in um, apparently it's got a seven foot whalebone now what does that mean seven foot whalebone I was thinking what, what do you mean a whalebone and then I look into it a little bit and I started listening and reading so I read I read this article about it a, a, an old article then I started asking people in the area what they thought and this is what they told me so apparently somewhere in this church okay they found a skeleton of a dun cow now what's a dun cow i mean i know a lot about cows what they look like etc but have i ever heard about a dun cow no have you let me tell you what it's about it's a strange thing really strange look at this guy sorry it's absolutely beautiful Tradition states that it was a fabled beast. So the dun cow was a f um, fabled geest. Geest? Blah, blah, blah. Flavoured, I was going to say now. I got stuck. You know what? I think it's when I'm in cemeteries. I don't know what happens. I lose what I'm saying. I forget what I'm saying even. Right? It's a fabled beast. So obviously it's not real. That's up to you to believe or not. A fabled beast of a dun cow. 
Now, so I'm just seeing here that a, a lot of gravestones again are really old here. Can you see any of these dates? Because some of them are really old. Um, and apparently, it's just a cow from this region, by the way. So a Stanyan cow, because this area obviously is called Stanyan. So it's a Stanyan cow. But what is shocking and what is a bit strange about this whole area is apparently um, the cow was either killed or was cursed by a witch. And the skeleton was kept inside this church. Now, why the hell would you keep a skeleton of a cow in a church? But that's what they say. And that's what's the curiosity of this church. Because apparently it's got a dun cow. A skeleton of a dun cow. Now, I don't know if you're into your fables. But I'll leave that for you to believe or not believe. But we're going to have a little walk around anyway. Because it's quite picturesque here. And let me know what you think. Got a few uh, gargoyles this church as well. Got a really, really tall steeple. I really like it here. It's really cool. Follow me. Just heading down here because we've got some quite old graves again I've seen. This one's earlier. It's 1902. Some really old ones. Um, but yeah, I'm just leaving my bike there. It's actually locked on the wheel. So good luck to anyone who tries to nick it. Nice little church, as I say. And yeah, I'm a bit baffled by this. So, apparently, a witch broke the heart of a cow. So, when I say broke the heart, I mean it was heartbroken. So the cow was heartbroken by a witch. That's what the story says. And it was tricked by her. So the witch tricked the cow, for whatever reason, with, with witch craft yeah and that is what is in this church it would be interesting to know if anyone knows anything else about this church here saint peter of stanion and if they know anything about this folklore about this fable i find it quite funny and quite peculiar and i thought to myself i might as well let you guys know about it because it's not an everyday thing really is it i was looking for some older gravestones here but i can't find them now um, these looking ones tend to be of Victorian age or older. <laughs> Got 1875 on that one, guys. Let's see my shadow in the way. 1875. Uh, so one there a bit older as well. Them, them ones that are darker. Um, there we go again. Let me move out the way of my shadow. I believe that's 1865. Got some quite old ones. Um, but yeah, quite a few people here from the name of Bell. Under the Bell, or someone of the village with that surname, Bell. So, guys, it looks like we can head off now towards Grafton Underwood as I'm looking for an old officers' club. Um, and that will be on my way back. And hopefully, I'll find it and I'll film it for you guys. If not, it will be on my next video where I'll go directly to Grafton Underwood. See you soon. And let me know what you think about this fable with a skeleton of a cow. Let's go. Right guys, I've just come from, um, what's it called? Uh, Stanyon. Um, I'm also heading now uh, to Brickstock, which looks very beautiful, but I'm gonna come back here on my next journey. Because on my next journey I plan to go to Brigstock, Sudborough and a few other places and then back to Thrapston that way. So I will be coming back that way on one of my next rides. But just want to say big hello to Chris and Daniel that I met in Stanyon. Stop off at a public house there. Uh, had a drink. Give me some energy. And then carry on my cycle. Uh, big hello to you both. I believe one of you have subscribed to my channel, so thank you. And nice to meet you both. And I uh, thought I'd say a big hello to you guys there from Stanyon itself. And as I say, I'm heading off to Grafton Underwood. Now, I don't know what I'm going to see. Don't know what I can see. 
but I do know I will see something for you guys. I've got low battery, which is a shame, but it's enough to try and show you a little bit more of Grafton. So follow me guys. I'm on the road now to Brixton, at uh, Brixton. Brigstock, and then off to Grafton Underwood. Um, I'm not stopping at Brigstock today, although I know it's a pretty place and there's some history there to it. It's got a lot of cottages, etc. But I will be stopping off in Grafton itself, trying to find an old bunker, whether it's open or not to the public, I don't know. Don't think so. But there's definitely an officer's club, an abandoned building that I plan to see. So follow me guys. After Grafton, I head back to Walkton and back home. So I'll say another thank you, but in case my battery goes, I want to thank everybody for watching today <laughs> on yet another adventure here on Pedro's Adventures. And I want to say a big hello to everybody who knows me in Nottingham. You know who you are, who I normally say hello to, and in Northamptonshire, which I know quite a few people. I want to say a big hello as well, a special hello to Big Popper Entertainment, um, the guy who owns it, Damien Cox. And again, if you want to look at his YouTube channel, he's got a new YouTube channel and he does a lot of events around Northamptonshire, all kinds of events including saving Wicksteed Park. So big hello to you, Damien Cox. I hope you're okay. And uh, hope to see you soon again. Hopefully help you in some other things for your entertainment company. A uh, big hello as well. Big hola to all my Spanish viewers. Un saludo desde Northamptonshire. Y a mi familia y amigos por España en comunidad. Comunidad Valenciana. Uh, also, a big hello to my brother Miguel if you're watching. And of course, hola a mi padre, papá Francisco, mi padre. Espero que estés bien. Hasta pronto. Right, guys, just off the main road of Grafton Road, I've come across what I believe is one of the monuments I've been looking for for a while. Now, we have been followed. Um, <clears throat> I tried to make out I was having a wee and now I said I've been looking for animal trails of uh, grass snakes but that's not why I'm here I'm here because I have found one of the monuments I was looking for in connection with Grafton Underwood now I've decided to come without any trousers on so this is quite a battle to get through here, guys. But now that I'm here, I don't really care. Look at it. Can you see what I found? Wow. How do I get through here? Oh my God, this hurts. I mean, I'm gonna try and stamp on these things because my legs are gonna get cut and all sorts. They really are. There must be a way through. Unless I come back here with trousers, I don't know what to do. I've definitely found one of the bunkers anyway. So I've got to get through here. Follow me, guys. As I say, guys, this was one of the um, places for Grafton Underwood RAF base. And this is a great find. I'm really happy about this. And it's hard to get to. I've had to come through the fields. It's livestock over there. But here we have it. Here we have it, guys. Wow, I found it. Look at that. So we go in, let's go in. It's abandoned, it's derelict, it's off grid, it's off map. You've got to find it by just coming about like I have. And this is a post, obviously. Bunker type post here. Guys, look at that. Oh, I'm really happy I found this. I've been looking for this for some time. Woo!